Hey, ESPN, I'm Jack. And I'm Miles from the Daily Zeitgeist, a daily comedic news podcast that answers the question, what if Stephen A. Smith spoke at a normal volume and his opinions were based on fact and not completely insane? This probably isn't the best way to describe this. No, you just negated the two things Stephen A. Smith is known for. Okay, what if The Daily Show was hosted by us? Yes, but who is us? Okay, I'm Jack. I'm the co-founder of Crack.com. And I'm Miles. I love soccer and get very nervous when I'm pulled over by the police. He's also a former lobbyist who quit politics for comedy. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we cover news, the president, pop culture, and we're both very big sports fans. I'm actually named after my grandfather, legendary NBA coach and ESPN alum, Dr. Jack Ramsey. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm named after Miles Davis, a legendary <laughs> heroin addict who is not my grandfather. So search the Daily Zeitgeist. If you don't know how to spell Zeitgeist, like most of us, just type in Daily Z. It'll figure it out for you. On Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And now... Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, hit the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po 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 po. Welcome. To Jalen Jacoby on ESPN Radio. Jalen Rose out. Thank God. So sick of doing the show <laughs> with Jalen Rose. We have two very special replacement Jalen's today. There's a theme today. There is. Everyone on the show today is, is fake. Parents. <laughs> Oh, of twins. Of twins. That's true. Rachel has twins. I, do. I have twins. Joining me later will be Amin El Hassan, also parent of twins. That's right. Although I believe, well, wait, how many children do you have? 7,000. <laughs> I have too many children. I have three children. I have okay. an older one, and then I have. That's what, I was going to say, I girls. believe I am the only one who had the twins first and then had the good sense to stop and to say, stop. let's not have them outnumber me. Because, you know, when they raise their army, I want to at least, you I'm know, have the parents. Parents have an equal shot. seriously looking into surgery to make sure I do not have any more children. <laughs> you and Amin, I believe, what? both had the older kid and then mm-hmm. rolled the dice for a second time. And it was like, ha ha, twins. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things that I never consider. Like, I think about, oh, maybe it'll be a boy or a girl. I right. want to be healthy. But it was never on the Space board. Space alien. It was just never something I thought about. Right. And that yet, it was even a possibility. So what was your react? Were you in the doctor's office when you found out? I was with Kevin Wilds. <laughs> in, the, the, in the J- doctor's wait the, wait wait yeah, in yeah. the doctor's no, office no 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 because if, no 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 We're do people know who session. Kevin is he is an executive that works at ESPN mm-hmm. he's in charge of NBA content he's and also if he was in your wife's doctor's office I'd have a lot more questions for you <laughs> he was not we were at lunch <laughs> And um, he it was he was done for work for the day. It was about two o'clock. Okay. And he was having a beer, and he's okay. like, "Do you want a beer?" I was like, "No, I'm going back to work." Right. And because there's no sense in having like one beer at lunch if you're going to work the rest of the day. I mean, there's people, people out there's there a, who sure, would argue sure with you, another, but I'm sure, sure another, for sure the purposes of your continued yes. ESPN employment, <laughs> yes, you yes. didn't you didn't did have it. a beer. But then when I found out that there was twins on the way, <laughs> I definitely had a beer. So did you get a text message? You get a phone call? A phone call. My wife said. Um, there's two heartbeats. I was like, good, yours and the child's. <laughs> and she said, no, there's no. two heartbeats. There's twins. Hold on. I'll call you back. They're checking for a third. Click. No. Oh, my God. And I was like, I am definitely having a beer with lunch. Yeah, there's yeah. no question about that. <laughs> if there was a third, we would never have seen you again. Mm. My doctor was doing the sonogram and, and just sort of looked at it and said, there's something else in there. Like a toaster. I don't know what. <laughs> yes, what was, so, it was the else? weirdest phrasing. And I was just waiting. He weighed a beat. And he's like, oh, yeah, there's a second heartbeat. Like, oh, my God. Wow. Thank you for that information. Yes. I almost wanted to. Well, not almost. I, I, I really wanted to go drink. I did not at that point. But yeah, I saved right. my drinking for after they're born. Yes. There's people, plenty of that. People, I do have people who say, ah, I used to drink a lot, but then I had kids. And I don't understand that sentence. All the way around. Totally the other way around. All the way around. Right? All the way around. <laughs> if children don't drive you to drink. I don't know it well. Uh, the other, what I was going to say was what everyone on the show had in common, or guesting on the show had in common. You, you, you announced us as the replacement Jalen's. Mm-hmm. Well, I spent the weekend with the replacement Jacoby. It was very traumatic for There me. is a replacement Jacoby. Jalen and I have not spoken about the Jalen versus everybody pilot. But people the show. read. You seem to think that your your listeners don't have the internet. Our listeners aren't like on Variety magazine <laughs> and like no. Deadline. It's all you know over what I mean? Internet. Like it's like our listeners are not reading Variety. They're not in the trades. Well, let me no. let me clear it up for people who don't have the Google. But um, Jalen had a pilot greenlit for ABC. They're in the what? middle of shooting it. Mm-hmm. It may get picked up. It mm-hmm. may not get picked up. It's definitely an accomplishment to just make it to the pilot stage. Written and conceived by the great Ninacha Khan. Absolutely. And 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 she did Fresh Off the Boat, mm-hmm. Don't Trust just the Bee in Apartment yep. 
23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, those. Very funny. Um, so it's good and it's exciting and it's been all over Twitter and Instagrams and Jalen's trying Facebook. really hard. Like he's like, she's trying harder at this than he ever did she's at really anything good. he's ever done at ESPN. Yes, so I was excellent. there. He's been very impressive. Like I don't yeah. really compliment Jalen very much. He's been very <laughs> impressive through this process. I was there on Saturday um, doing a very quick cameo and I was honestly startled when the scene called for Jacoby and somebody's face popped out of the, the Harry door. Harry Crane from Mad Men, Richard Summer, very nice <laughs> it man. It was very bizarre, I have wow. to tell you. I spoke to Wilds earlier today, and he's saying there's a lot of momentum that fake Jacoby is better than real Jacoby. And I have to agree, he was very sweet. Like, he was really nice, he was smiley, he was warm. Right. He's a lot of things I'm not, and I'm starting to be concerned <laughs> that fake Jacoby is an actual better version of me than of actual you. me. Yeah. Well, we have to worry, if fake Jacoby shows up to do the show one of these days, that's, that's really... Murder him. <laughs> I went, that's why we have baseball bats that's all over the studio. All over. I will say that your guy stood up for you, though, because I asked Jalen, under the hot white lights of the camera, who do you prefer, fake Jacoby or real Jacoby, with with fake Jacoby just nearby. So, you know, you might think you'd have pressure, mm. right, when in mm-hmm. the room to say the guy who was standing there. And no, I will say, he said, real Jacoby, that's my guy. That's my guy. Jalen Rose not here. Rachel Nichols joining me on Jalen Jacoby on ESPN Radio. We're going to transition into actual stuff. Mm-hmm. Adam Silver said this about a female coaching in the NBA. Female head coach. Yes. There definitely will be, and I think it is on me to sort of ensure that that happens sooner rather than later. It's a hard thing for him to now enact upon. Like, what is yeah. step one towards this if you are Adam Silver? That, that is odd phrasing. I assume what he means is that it's up to me to set the tone, create an environment, encourage our ownership, that this is all a good idea. And the NBA, frankly, has been doing versions of that for a long time. Mm-hmm. The NBA has never had a specific Rooney rule, but no. has certainly encouraged teams to look at African-American candidates for executive positions, coaching positions, uh, look for female candidates in executive in the front office and things like that. Certainly encourage, was encouraging when the Spurs decided to make Becky Hammond an assistant coach and mm-hmm. sort of say that's the kind of environment that we want. And it's made a difference when your front office, when the league stresses that, because look, the NBA has been a leader in all of those categories. And that's stuff's important. It affects the direction of the league and the tone these franchises are set and how the players are treated if somebody who maybe looks like them is in the front office or a mm. coach. That makes a difference. Um, I- I'm not sure he can ensure anything beyond that. Ensure but, it's probably just poor phrasing. Yeah, but I will say that, that the NBA, sort of the way the situation is organically developing right now is kind of the best possible version, right? Yes. Because if you look at Becky Hammond, who is, of course, an assistant on the Spurs coaching staff, the first woman to be in that position in the NBA, um, Being, first of all, part of the Greg Popovich coaching tree Mm -hmm. gives you a legitimacy in this league that you probably he also creates an environment which is very much like a meritocracy. Absolutely, it's not sort of like the Kings where it's like, hey, let's just let's just hire whoever you know, like like if they've got a higher Q score, they can end up in the Kings front office. Where where the the Spurs organization seems like she's truly earned it. Right, so that sort of gives everyone that patina of like, yeah, she deserves to be there. Plus, she's a former player, and Mm -hmm. I know she's not a former NBA player, but she was an accomplished WNBA player, an accomplished college player, so. I do think that guys walk onto the court and have automatic respect for someone who played at a high level. Maybe even in some cases with some guys, a little more for her, even though she played in a different league, than a guy who came in totally from the outside with no playing experience. So, I mean, I think she's got all that organic stuff going for her. I was pleased that she turned down the head coaching job at Florida that was apparently just offered to her. Um, Some of the guys on our panel at the jump said they thought she should take it to sort of, quote, round out her head coaching experience so she could say she did that once, but my my viewpoint is there's lots of female head coaches at the college level that she is distinct in being at the NBA level. She was the head coach of this first summer league team, and she probably will get that gig again. So she can at least point to, hey, here's a couple yeah, months where I was the in. A, they won well. the summer league yeah. with her and her f- first head coaching slot there. And they, uh, I think that. There, nothing will prepare you to better be a head coach in the NBA than being part of an NBA organization. Absolutely. You know? So, I mean, I, I don't know what Adam Silver can ensure, but I do think the climate in the NBA is probably better than in other leagues for a say team it. to feel just supported. Just say it. What? The climate in the NBA is better than the NFL. <laughs> well, I mean, it just is. <laughs> I could name a lot of other leagues. Sure. <laughs> I, mean, sure. I like to go after the NFL if you, a little bit. If you just say the NFL, isn't that a low bar? Yes. It's a great point. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I need you to educate me on something very quickly. Mm hmm. Jeannie Buss, 
Yes. Has ninja essentially? She's a ninja. Come on now. She has right? essentially like removed Jim Bus from the Lakers' trust. I'm not that smart. Mm-hmm. I don't have that much money, so the word trust doesn't mean anything beyond like, <laughs> hey, don't tell anybody. <laughs> right. So don't tell anyone. There's a fake Jacoby me, like, like that. I'm a ten year old. Mm-hmm. What Genie Bus has just accomplished? I just want to sort of go over the breadth of what Genie Bus has accomplished. When her father was alive and the kids were sort of coming of age and sort of deciding to go into the business or not, her dad, I I did a big interview with her a few years ago, and and she said that her dad was pretty blunt with her. He Mm -hmm. was an old school guy. And to him, he loved Jeannie. He obviously trusted Jeannie and, and thought the world of her. But he told her he was inclined to pass down the team and certainly its basketball direction to his sons. That That's just the way he saw it. He thought that the boys would sort of, quote, know better and do a better sure. job. Uh, Jeannie's the one who went and got an MBA. Jeannie's the one who showed an interest in the business super early and had a real knack for it and certainly developed up the marketing side of the Lakers business. But he sort of tended to, to sort of favor the boys. The boys just didn't show themselves to be qualified to do that. And Jeannie, over the years, showed herself more and more qualified to do that to the point of when he was dying and it came time to put his trust together for the team. He did two important things. First of all, he phrased the trust and consolidated it in a way that the family can't really sell it off for parts. Mm. They either all have to decide to be in or out and it's not going to go to other people in divorces or other things like that. It's going to stay really tight in the family. And he also put in language to make Jeannie the controlling owner. So even just in that, if you look at that 20-year journey, I want everyone to notice and and to to realize how impressive that is on Jeannie's part to earn her way into that job in a situation where wasn't really predisposed to give it to her. Then once she took over and gave her brother, who was uh, running basketball operations, you, you can't argue he had every benefit of the doubt all the time that he might need. And when he wasn't getting it done, she removed him. Then there was an attempt from the Bus Brothers to sort of oust Jeannie, some sort of like last minute end run, and she just blocked that like a Dikembe Mutombo. Ninja. I mean, she just worked around it. it. It really is amazing. The language of the trust certainly backed her up, but the way that she went about sort of cutting off the head of the snake or anyone who was trying to, to, to disturb her reign was One of my favorite impressive. parts is all of a sudden Magic was like, yeah, it was actually his dying wish was yeah. to put me in charge. <laughs> really? Really? I mean, you know. I don't know. I guess it's that was magic. your interpretation of the conversation. <laughs> hey, who's going to argue who with knows? him right now, right? Kawhi Leonard. He is a basketball player. See, you didn't think I was going to get that, but I'm on top totally of it. Totally a basketball player. T- on top Definitely of it. Definitely does that. I should totally host an NBA show. And also, yep. probably a robot. Let's listen to his <laughs> post-game sound after dismantling the Cleveland Cavaliers. Are you having fun being a go-to guy? Uh, definitely. You know, basketball is fun, and it's just amazing that uh, I was able to get to Let's listen to it again. Is this a robot or not? Uh, definitely. You know, basketball is fun, and it's just amazing that... See, earlier this season, Andre Iguodala suggested he was one of the robots from Westworld, and I think that was just to throw us off from Kawhi. It's like, are you having fun? Basketball is fun. <laughs> Input. He's never smiled. Well, someone last night put up, like, the Kawhi Leonard mood ring, and it had, like, happy, black. sad, <laughs> it was all the same color. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is uh, he's just a fascinating a, human he's being. He's going to be laughing all the way to, what, he has a finals MVP, he's got a ring, he's got two defensive players of the year. I mean, you know, I think he's doing okay. He is doing excellent. He also has me drinking high alkaline water, or high <laughs> pH level water. So you know about this? He was I like, don't. He had a quote in GQ. It was interesting. The first thing he's ever said that was interesting, ever. <laughs> and he said... You don't realize that not all water is good for you. First of all, I was like, what? I mean. I was like, huh? And then he he goes, you have to be careful. Make sure that you're drinking high pH and alkaline water. Hmm. He said, trust me at the end. Wow. What? Yeah. So where does one find high alkaline water? Well, there's this one called Essentia. Okay. And it, you don't just like dip some batteries in water. I don't. And then that's, drink, that's another thing. I was, like, I was, I was really like, huh? I was like, I wonder what alkaline means, and I wonder what pH balance means. Like, mm. all I know is pH balance for a woman for deodorant. That's all. <laughs> exactly. That's the only time I've ever heard pH. I think it's shampoo, <laughs> but still, it was just like that's the only time I've ever used that. I have no idea what it means, but I'm clearly convinced that Kawhi is a robot that runs on high alkaline water. Well, there you go. He's he's doing well. Now, where are you in the MVP race debate? I'm kind of like outside. You know, I'm like, ah, someone will yeah. win. Whatever. <laughs> no Those guys are all me. really good at basketball. 
You know? Well, I'm asking. Pretend- if, if I had a yes, vote. right now. If I had a vote, I would want to vote for LeBron James. Like, my heart would want to, but because I feel like he's the best player. Mm-hmm. I have also, first of all, I plagiarized all kinds of things from you guys in the gym. Sure. But I've credited you on this one, that I do love the best season, best player. Thank sort you. of like dual award. I think that they will not adopt that exact title. Right. But what about this? We have a defensive player of the year. Yes. See where I'm going here. I do. Offensive Bring it on. player of the year. There we go. And then MVP. You give Which LeBron is what the James NFL the does, MVP. By the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You give LeBron James the MVP. Give Russell Westbrook offensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. Say sorry, James Harden. And then you give defensive player of the year to Lance Stevenson. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Draymond no. Green. <laughs> no. I mean, look here. Probably. M- probably. My my cell has been that yes, the NFL, as you say, has a most valuable player and offensive player of the year. The NHL has best scorer, and then MVP is a separate award mm-hmm. because there should be a separate award for who's the best player in the NBA. If someone did put one of Jalen's baseball bats to your head and said, "Start a team right now today to win the title today," you'd probably pick LeBron or Kawhi, Everybody right? Picks you LeBron. wouldn't pick yeah. Russ or James Harden to be your no, number one. You would not. Whatever. You would not. But. Those two guys are having the best season. So we should make the designation. And people who have said to me back, they said, oh, well, then Michael Jordan would have won MVP almost every year. Yes. Perfect. That's exactly yes! right. That is the, the, that, the, you have my nailed argument. the point. Yes. Kobe Bryant yeah, yeah, yeah. won one MVP award. That is a broken system. Mm-hmm. I am not all about Kobe the way some people are in terms of thinking he's the greatest player ever. Sure. But you cannot argue that he was not the best player in the league for a period of time that extended perhaps more than one year. Do you have a muse cage? I don't. I thought that was fascinating. This though. is my muse cage, by the way. We're in it. We are in I'm, my I'm muse in cage. your muse cage. Your muse cage has a fireplace, although I don't think it's real. If anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, Kobe Bryant did a short film, we'll call it, yeah. that was essentially like half Sesame Street, half The Jump, and part Wonder Showsen from MTV. If anyone's ever weird reference that no one gets except for me, <laughs> but it is just it was odd. It was odd. It was creative. Odd. And he he, cre- he created the term muse cage, which is essentially like a a inspiration wall. Your thinking box. Yeah, your thinking box. And there's dark <laughs> muse cages and light muse cages. And then it's I got like, like sleepy and I was like, this is getting long. Angel. I'm going to stop watching this. <laughs> wow. You might not be his intended audience. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, I would vote Kawhi Leonard as the MVP because I believe that 50% of your value on a basketball court is defensive. Okay. You're fifty percent of the time you play basketball, you are playing defense. I would say that is less important now. Now that the rules are different, now that the way the skill positions have sort of shuck out, while people used to say defense wins championships, I'm not sure that's true in the NBA anymore. But it's more important than nothing. It's so. interesting. I like that. Defense is not that important. That's what you're. I know. Going I said with. it's not as important. No, no, I like that. No, defense doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, I forgot. This is radio. We <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. have any nuance. No, exactly. It, it no. has to be either it's every. No, no. It's 100%, and also, what you say, I will change 0%. what you say right. into something that you don't believe, yes, and then disagree with you. Absolutely. With what you don't believe in. Should we come up with other versions of that? Because I think there's we only can one. It's called first take. Come on. Right. Let's okay. Be that's true. Yeah. All right, all right. You got let's, me there. Let's not. Exactly. Let's not. Too close to the sun. Exactly. Really important question. <laughs> Do you think Jay Cutler has a nice butt? You know, I, I had to search for the photo today, what? which was very awkward feeling. I know I have apparently I have irresponsible people on my Twitter timeline because nobody tweeted it into my timeline just so I could sort of say, oh, I happened upon oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah no, no, right? no, no, no. Oh, it was all over my timeline. I apparently, I need to follow tra- trashier people like you. I, what? thank you. Mm-hmm. I thought he looked great. <laughs> He looks look great. He's a free agent. He's not taking meetings. He's with his... Do, do you know Chris and Cavallari is? I do. Do you ever watch Laguna Beach? I, I don't, but I separately, you're, you're familiar, I, think, I am familiar yes. with her and well, think she's, I've she watched appears enough to be of quite it a catch. for the both of us. Yes. And it was just I like, know she looks good in a bikini because I've she seen does. a lot of pictures of her she posting does. like that. She does. But Jay Cutler, there's a photo of him on vacation. He's facing out at the ocean. Yes. And his rear is facing the camera, and he is not wearing a, a stitch of clothing. He, there's a, a fence in front of him that is made of, like, branches. Yes. I always like sort of, like, not... It's not like a two-by-four. No, it's that someone very shaved arty. down. Yeah. yeah, it was very much like a natural... I always mm-hmm. like, like a natural sort of coffee table. It's always good, like a stump that's been covered with a nice glaze. <laughs> like it grew in your living room. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, we didn't get to see Cutler's stump, but we did see his butt. We, we did. And it just seemed did great. You notice, here's what I noticed about that photo is that she tagged another football player in the photo. Mm. So like, I don't know hey, if... check this out. I, well, that's what I was unclear on. If Maybe they're on vacation. Jay's life, I assume it is. They, they'll they, see it. I mean, I didn't go that far to, to, yeah. to, to Twitter stock, whoever it was, or Instagram stock, whoever it was. But it, it seemed either they're on vacation with another couple, maybe including that other player, mm-hmm. or it was a message to that other player, 
or on Instagram to that other who knows so that's the intrigue continues. good for jay cutler yeah man spend as much time as you want on vacation naked as you want naked. to be very quick question one thing we always do is keep tabs on power couples here mm. jalen and jacoby we're mm-hmm. supportive supportive of power couples jalen and jacoby are their own power couple we are both in power couples yes. is how we like to phrase it oh, okay do you support the union of alex rodriguez and jennifer lopez oh yeah big time right no i know how I don't come? Know. I don't know. On the heels of the Drake thing, and I keep remembering. Jennifer Lopez can do anything she wants. I was young in New man. York when A Rod was dating Madonna, and he was on the Yankees. Like, do you remember that? I was there. Like year, it was just like this is weird to me, man. <laughs> and he was kissing himself in the mirror in the photos. Mm, yeah, but now he's 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 such a good analyst. He's that really we've, good. We've apparently forgotten he's everything really that came good. before. He's good. He is really good. He is really good. He really good. He really is. It's one of those things, like some people, you're just like, oh. This guy is good at this. Isn't it strange, though? He was When he was drafted, he was supposed to be the most talented kid to ever come out of high school. I mean, the scouts went crazy over him. Turns out, baseball career, not exactly what we thought it was going to turn out to be. Nobody thought he would be any good on TV, and now he's the second coming. You never know. The Jump <laughs> is a show. It's a quality television show, 3 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, on your dial. That's ESPN 1. That's my plug. That's, yes. that's all I got. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's a great show. Thank you. Um, one thing I pride myself on is coming up with titles. Okay. And evaluating titles. Excellently titled show. Thank you. That was me. Is what do you think? Vi- Did I do okay? Oh, great job. All right. Do you know who titled Jalen versus Everybody? Who? Molly Karam. Oh, there we go. Another great title. The Jump is a great title. It's got like, a, like The Jump is a basketball thing that happens that it starts is. off the game. Yep. And it's also got like The Jump. Like This right. is The Jump. It kind of sounds like hip hop and cool. We got you from The Jump. It's good. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm way into The Jump. Very show. good. I like that. Thank you. You should, next... have se- you should have seen what was on my, my full five title list, but that was definitely the best one. I do. Um, big shout to the Podfather. Mm. I have a gripe with the Podfather, Bill Simmons. Yes. When he was coming up with the name of The Ringer, his okay. new sort of media company. Right. When they announced the name, he also um, shared a photo of their, like, uh, candidate board, you know? So I kind of feel like... Wait. He, so it was like... So this is... He, so he shared a photo of all the, the names that didn't make it. Oh, I see. Okay. But I kind of feel like it's like opening the M&Ms and licking every single one. Right. You're like, oh, it's so like, now yeah, no so, one can yeah, use any of yeah, these so names. It's like every, Thanks a lot. So every name like, that's generic but also related to sports that also sounds cool, oh, yeah, we already made that one up. Do you think that was an accident? No. I know Absolutely Bill well. not. No, 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 no. <laughs> and titles are very important to me. <laughs> right. You know, it's just kind of like, dude, like... You didn't have to do that. You just licked all the M and M's. It's like naming a baby and then going around telling everyone, "Well, you can't use this name because we also thought about that." Because you licked an M and M doesn't mean I'm owning it. Well, that's true. It doesn't mean you're not going to drink. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be delicious. I I, didn't. Didn't he say though? Partly, whatever they picked had to do something with like where they could get a web address and stuff like that. There's a lot of factors. There's a lot of kind of boring factors about coming up with a name. Oh, actually, in Spanish, that means murder. It's like, okay, cool. Let's not do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll try something else. We did because I kind of you know I pitched the jump and 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 everybody internally at ESPN was very cool about buying into it. And then legal came back and said, apparently there's like a reality TV show there is. in England where people jump off of things or do some big jump or I don't know what they do. There's jumping involved and there was some concern, but we, we skated by that. There's always a reason to not do something. Yeah. Don't let that stop you. Don't let it stop you. Kids. <laughs> Story about the jump. <laughs> After school special. Go ahead. What's the most surprising thing about working with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? He gave me a pair of socks. With hmm. his own face on it. Hmm. I was so happy. It was a Christmas present. Stance socks. Stance socks. Very comfortable. With cartoon Kareem. Coming from Kareem. Kareem. That is, that, I don't think I would wear is, those. That is one of the happiest moments of my life. And a big surprise. I did was not expecting that. And now whatever happens when I eventually get fired from this job... When I, you know, write my big manifesto, I'll say, but I got Kareem socks from Kareem. And that will be enough. What's going to get you fired? <laughs> oh, my God. So we'll get much. you fired by the end of this program. Right? Exactly. Don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, I agreed to come yeah. here. So. Yeah, yeah, that's step one. Step one right there. <laughs> I feel like, don't you feel like you walk the line every single day? I have a Kevin Wilde story for you. Oh, go. Um, we used to do stand-up comedy together. I bet you didn't know that. For years in New York City. Are there, and he used to is request, there a video of this? He used to request that I punch him in the face before he go on stage. What? That's not true. That's fact only. So he would, and, and like he didn't want me to like mimic it either. He would want me to punch him in the face before he goes on stage. Why? 
it would like wake him up and make him angry. Has he heard of coffee? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's bizarre. I just wanted to share that with you so How you could you... use that against him later in life. Now maybe we'll have people, we'll have a rotating group of people to punch him when he comes out here. Um, I how... have Jalen punch me in the face before every single show. <laughs> I was going to ask you when yeah. the last time you punched someone as an adult. I don't do that. Long like, time ago. I mean, I'm when old. someone didn't ask for it. No, what no. was the last punch you when threw I'm, in mm. anger? Well, no. Were you 10? Were you... <laughs> That's not happening. You are not going to get those stories out of me. I think people who you follow this show... are not going to get those stories out of me. should start it has been tweeting to Jacoby. Quite some time. Asking him well, for his stories of violence. They can also uh, just watch the show on ESPN2 and see how no- crooked my nose is. Mm-hmm. And that's an indication right there. Mm. Sometimes you're not always doing the punching. Sometimes you you're go. blocking the punches with your face. <laughs> Sometimes you're the punchy. Exactly. Doesn't, you know, you don't win every game. <laughs> exactly. That's how it goes. I think people only share the stories about what fights they won. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like you, re- you rarely hear the one who's like, oh, yeah, this dude just kind of beat me up. Yeah. That's, again, why I admire Jalen. He's always very, he's like, ah, Kobe 81. I'll talk about that. Can you untangle this uh, Sam Hankey thing for me? It, which which part? <laughs> okay. Sam Hankey. There's, it's oh the kings. Anything that starts with the kings, it's like it could just be anything. You know, you know we have I mean? the segment it, it, yes, on the job called course "As the Kings Turn." Yes. This is why. So it, it comes out that the kings are interested in hiring Sam Hinkie, right? And that is reported by Zach Lowe and Mark, Mark Stein. Stein, two people sitting next to you Impeccable on the jump from time judgment. to time. Yep. And then the kings have a statement that's like, "Nah, comma." <laughs> We're not going to do that, period. Right. With like an emoji at the end. <laughs> but the emoji was just like a surfer. It didn't really make sense. Exactly. Right. And it's like there is nothing surprising about the Kings. But my question for you is someone who understands not just basketball, mm-hmm. but media and public relations and managing the message. How does this happen? Yeah. So they the story by Mark and Zach was that the Kings had asked permission to... Uh, from the Sixers to get to Sam Hinkie. They don't, need to do so because he's, under, because he's, he's still, still under contract. Yeah, yeah. So it's not even just like, oh, yeah, are we arguing whether they had a phone call or not? They've actually gone to the trouble of asking permission to another team. This is a hard thing to backtrack. And something mm-hmm. that a lot of people in a different organization who have no interest in protecting you yes. can verify. Yes. So yes. it's kind of a dumb thing to lie about if that is, in fact, what is going on here. Oh, no, that's definitely what's going on. Oh. I'm allowed to say that. They're lying. You know also, what I mean? You can't get in trouble for saying someone's lying on a podcast, If right? you are the Sacramento Kings, and several times in the past year and a half, you have made actual written statements that have turned out to be completely false just, I don't know, a week or two later, maybe just stop with the statements, right? Yeah. Just maybe let it let it go. See what happens. Sam Hinkie may or may not work for the Kings eventually, but I would not put out a statement saying he's definitely not going to get hired. I was just surprised it was Sam Hinkie. I thought it would be like Britney Spears or something. <laughs> to be like, we've, we've hired Christina Aguilera. Right. She has a lot. She, has, she works with she's teams. She's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just, she brings a new... She's entertainment's very important she to us. We're having a new arena. Right. Yeah, we just felt like things... Well, you know what? Traditional hires weren't working for us, so we brought <laughs> we on Miss Aguilera as a consultant. <laughs> the thing is that Sacramento Kings of all franchises have shown the patience of a fruit fly as an organization, mm. and Sam Hinkie's whole skis is yes. what... The process, the process, three or four years from now, you will finally begin to see the blip of a result. I kind of feel like Sam Hinkie, like went to the store, the farmer's market even. Okay. Bought all the ingredients. Organic. Chopped them all up. Yes. You know, and then and then put the put it all together, put the roast in the oven, set the timer to nine hours, <laughs> and then they like fired him after eight hours and thirty minutes. And then someone else comes out like, Hey, here's the pot roast. It's beautiful. Here it is. Look what I cooked for you. Yes. Now Poor guy. yeah. Steven Jackson was on our show today. He his argument was, Well, the Sixers aren't there yet, so you can't claim that he did anything. I would counter argue the Sixers are so much better off than they were a couple of years ago, and I'm a big Joel Embiid backer. So um I agree with you on saying that. I've got bad news for you. Tell me. Joel Embiid is never going to make an all-star game. <sighs> You're not Embiid, one of these people, are you? Yeah, I am. It's Come like, on. I love Joel Embiid. First of all... You hate fun. I love fun. You that, are a I'm, robot. This is where I am going. I'm like, there's nothing I love more than personality on athletes, than jokes on athletes, people mm-hmm. that let us behind the curtain, people that are fun. You have to remember, he's hilarious in his second language. He's so like, it good. Is, he, he is excellent. All the way across the board, and hopefully one day he becomes an analyst or something, because it is not going to work in the NBA when you are that tall and you have this many injuries and this many surgeries. At that age, it is a very bad induca- indication. Where do you fall on the Rookie of the Year? Would you vote for him for Sar- Rookie of the Year? Sarge. Oh, you, Sarge. Because you think 
that Sarge is better or because you just I don't think vote. that Embiid is It's not enough. only 31 games. It's 31 games with a minutes restriction. So it's not just 31 games, which is, which is I don't know, 40% of the games probably. Right. It's 40% of the games on a restriction. Let me ask you something. So How 50% did you... of 40%, he paid 20% of the games. Okay. My so math is given... perfect. <laughs> totally. That is exactly yeah, how, how the numbers work yes. out. Um, given that he only had that small canvas to work on, in the time that you saw him play, did he impress you a little bit or a lot? Inspired me. Okay. Yes. So why are you punishing him for the fact that despite having so little to work with, that's the way he made you feel? Because it's not best rookie season. It's just best rookie. And guess what? We saw enough of him to know he was the best rookie. Not buying it. Nah, not for on, a second. Why? Your logic checks out, but that doesn't Thank mean you. I just can't stand on the table and be like, nah. <laughs> just like the King statement. Like, no. No. No, sorry. actually. No, you have to play basketball in order for me to feel like you're good at playing basketball. But but the, he did. That's the thing. That's mm. where that's where mm. all of you guys trip yourselves mm. up. You sit there and say, yeah, you got to play enough basketball. He did play enough basketball because look at how you feel about it. What him. if you play one game and score 60 points? You probably would not feel the same way about him that you do now. It, would, it didn't happen over one night, right? He turned in a good performance the first time he was on the court and you're like, oh, that's interesting. He's pretty good. Then after the third time and the eighth time and the tenth time and the whatever time, that's when you said, aha, he's The most my impressive guy. thing he has done on a basketball court so was, was dance enough. with the dancers after the game. Yes. I mean, he's done some dancing with dancers in his private time, too. We've I'm seen his sure Instagram, his live IG feed. Has. <laughs> Jalen Jacoby, David Jacoby, along with Rachel Nichols. Thank God Jalen is not here. Does your wife call you David? Yeah. Okay. So but not- no, she calls me Jacoby, like mainly. But no. she, she mixes in David. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wilds only calls you Jacoby. I've yeah. Noticed. Yeah, yeah. My name is, my professional name is Jacoby. But I answer to David. Okay. I also answer to fake Jacoby. Fake now. Jacoby yeah, now. That's, that's, that's also something else I answer Let's to. face it. <laughs> Whatever it is. Anybody takes. who wants to see fake Jacoby can go to my Facebook page because I plastered up yep. fake Jacoby versus real Jacoby for people to vote on. Um, everybody on this show today. Myself, Rachel Nichols, soon to be joined by Amin al all twin parents. I'm now giving you a list of twins in sports. We're not going to read the whole list because it's long and a lot of like tennis players from the 1900s. <laughs> but pick a favorite. I'm, I'm going to give you some nominees. Okay. Ronda and Tiki Barber. Right. The Lopez twins. Yep. Who else we got out here? Um, Ozzy and Jose Canseco. Forgot about them. Mm-hmm. Markeef, Marcus Morris, Jaron, and Jason Collins. Favorite twins in sports. That's tough. Um, I like the McCordy twins. Okay. I, I like what they do out the, you know, their, yep. their whole presence. Um, They're the Wimbledon guys, right? No, they play football, my friends. I don't know what I'm talking about. You oh, know, the yeah, NFL, it's a big league. People yep. like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they wear helmets. <laughs> it's hard to see them. Jaron and Jason Collins, very good guys. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you got to be impressed with Jason, who was a pioneer and did a thing that being outspoken. I'm trying to think of like the best way to phrase it. Not everybody would sit there openly and say... Openly gay professional Yeah, athlete. not everybody would sit there and say, hey, I'm standing up for who I am and I'm, if you have a problem with it, I don't really care. Mm. I think that that's big. I think that's a big deal. Um, pounces, like the pounces. I do like that Markeith and Marcus Morris have the exact same tattoos, but I think that there's some sort of nefarious reason for that. You, you know think what I mean? they're really the same person? Yeah, something. You know what I mean? It's just a little, just a little too weird. You know they share a bank account. I did hear that, but I can't believe that's still true. It is true. It would just lead to a lot of problems. You know what I mean? Like if me and Jalen shared a bank account, it would like <laughs> there'd just be a lot of just like, wait, you took out how much money? <laughs> what, what do you need five thousand dollars cash for, dude? You know, it'd be a lot of that. Well, one of them took a pay cut so they could stay in the same team yeah, as the other one, and then out. of course the team yeah, yeah. totally screwed them. Great. So we're worked not going to say who that was, the Phoenix Suns. But anyway. Yeah. There you go. Questions from Twitter. James has a big question. Do you prefer a gas or electric stove? No one prefers an electric stove. I was going to say, who no wants one in an the world stove? prefers an no electric one. stove. No, no one. one in the world. However, I do have a hot take here. Mm. My wife is the best person in the world. Yes. You know, when I say something nice, about to say something mean. Right. She called. I was like, we need a new grill. I'm living in Los Angeles. Sure. Grilling is a big part big of it. Big part of life. She goes, do you want a gas grill or do you want like one of those charcoal grills? I said, gas grill, definitely. She buys me a charcoal grill. <laughs> Doesn't really work that well. I know. So don't get a charcoal why grill. Are you, why are you not buying your own grill? Because it was a nice present. 
It's a good present. Was it a gift? It was a gift. Oh, okay. It was a gift. Okay. But she asked me specifically which one I wanted. And, and yeah, I told her and she, and got, the she got the other one. And I bring it up on radio shows I was later just say, to make everybody really feel grateful. better about it. It's nice. I'm the worst person in the world. <laughs> like, I really think I am. <laughs> no wonder they replaced you on TV. <laughs> Joey, you're the greatest. Exactly. See, fake Jacoby, <laughs> fake Jacoby is better <laughs> than the real Jacoby. <laughs> I'm starting I'm to be telling swayed. You, I was on your team. Fake Jacoby would never tell that story. I was on your team coming into today. Fake Jacoby would never tell that story. When I go back to the set, I'm going to be like, you know what? Maybe fake Jacoby. Rachel Nichols, the Cavaliers are now the number two seed in the East. They are. Something or nothing? Medium. I'm right? like nothing. Eh. Them being the number two seed, that's nothing, right? LeBron's mm-hmm. actually never lost uh, going through the East as the number two yeah. seed. One where... home game in the conference finals is yes. what that sort of nets whatever. out to. But how poorly they are playing right now, that is something. Is it? It's not everything. Mm-hmm. It's just something. The fact that since the All-Star break, they've had the 29th worst defensive efficiency in the entire yes. league. The only team, there are only 30 teams for those of you playing along at home. The only team below them is the Lakers who are trying to lose. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. That's half the season. That's very, very bad. Yeah. Um, they're the slowest team on offense in the league. That's not good. Tyloo just said, like, it seems like we're slower than everybody else. Like, yeah, <laughs> yes, because, because everyone's you old. Are. <laughs> yeah, because you're but, old and but slow. But they were playing, playing the Spurs last night, who are actually older, older than them, yeah. and yet more spry. Let's let's put it that way. So that's not good. Um, and, you know, th- they've had a bunch of injuries. They're not a team that likes to practice a lot because they are an older team, and mm-hmm. I understand that. But if you don't really practice and you have guys you're trying to work back into the lineup, you're going to see – in the games, and that's what we're seeing now. I, yes, they're going to get healthy, and, and they'll get right to some degree in the first round, but I don't know. It does make me nervous that they're having this this level of problems this late in the season. That being said... LeBron James has been in the finals okay. for six straight years, yeah. and I believe was only the number one seed in the East one of those six years. I think it's a couple. One, one thing I do here is I just say facts. I was like say, facts. <laughs> I don't I've read know read something if like that. I don't know if I'm going right. to say it is. We'll, see, we'll have John Lawrence look it up. <laughs> I, I think he's only been the number one seed. I think you're wrong. Let's find out. <laughs> this will be exciting. What a great do, team. Do, we'll do, find out do, by the do, end of the segment. Do, do. Um, that being said, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about them being the number two seed. And I'm not worried about them in terms of if you, if you – put the baseball bat to my head and said, are they still going to be the team that comes out of the East? Can we just ask nicely? There's no... You know, no like, not, like, what are we going to use baseball bats? Let's just ask nicely. Like, hey, Rachel, do you think they'll come out of the East? You, you still have, you know? to, you still have you to pick them as the team to come out of the East, but I don't think it's the foregone conclusion mm-hmm. that maybe it looked like at mm-hmm. other points in this season. I would agree. I'd, I'd say one thing that LeBron does, and he's done this before, is right around this time of year, we've actually got it. in like So it was last year, March 8th, mm-hmm. right around this time of year, a little earlier, he said... I can sit up here and say we're a team that's ready for to start the playoffs tomorrow, but we're not. Correct. And then right when the playoffs started, he said, if it started tomorrow, we'd be ready to go. <laughs> I and mean, the man owns three, the calendar. There's three no, weeks later. There's no. He does this thing, this negative reinforcement. We're the worst team in the world. We need to get better. We're not what we need to be. We're not tough enough. We're not playing defense enough. And then, like... Once the playoffs start, it's like, we're the greatest team in the world. We're probably not going to lose a game. Do you well, remember that when they didn't lose a game? He's like, yeah, we're probably just going to win 16 <laughs> games in a right. row because we're the greatest. Um, 538, our sister team over there on the Neat Silver website, um, said that if the playoff, if they were playing the way they're playing right now, they have a 2% chance of repeating as champions. But as they say, they don't got to win a title right now, so that doesn't matter so much. We'll see how they look in a couple the months. The whole, like, chances to win thing and, like, oh, like, win probabilities. Like, I don't want to hear this ever again. Like, it's hard two after minutes the election. Left. After this yeah. election, yeah, exactly. it's sort of like you don't believe anyone yeah, about and, anything also, anymore. Also, like, the, I yeah. think the NCAA yeah. tournament is a really good ex- right. example of that because it's only a single game. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, like, guess what? Bad teams be, be good teams yeah. sometimes, yeah. and that just happens. Over the course of seven-game series, now exactly the same. We have another great question. This is from someone who writes in a lot. Okay. Childish poetry. Is Jalen okay? Oh, because he's been absent. No, just, I think he means more in general. <laughs> in general. You know, he listens to the show a lot. <laughs> he writes like, it every day. It's like, is he okay? <laughs> is he gonna... I'm looking at that hard no. Well, if you guys oh. haven't told people about the pilot that much, you haven't discussed it that much, we I haven't. would see people might think that he has some terminal illness or that, you know, I don't know, maybe he's trapped under something heavy. Mm. But in truth, he's just shooting a television pilot with a fake Jacoby. With a fake Jacoby. <laughs> right. <laughs> that everyone likes more than the real Jacoby. I'm totally I mean, fine with that. I, again, I didn't walk in here I'm feeling totally that way. I'm totally fine with that. I'm I totally may walk fine out here feeling that way. D- does fake Jacoby, is there like a line with your actual real wife? Like, does fake Jacoby have any privileges? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a line. 
There's a line. <laughs> yes, Rachel. There's a line. There's a very, a very, very dark line. That's a good question out of it. That was a great question. <laughs> Another great question. This is the last question for Rachel Nichols. Getting to the hard hitting stuff. Mm. It's also from Childish Poetry. You guys need a cough button, yeah. We had one, but it's too complicated. Really? Because you would push it and then it would stay but depressed. I, feel like I just coughed on people. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> they don't mind. No, okay. Childish Poetry. First of all, before you give this answer, I want to thank you so much for coming in <laughs> and replacing you gonna, Jalen Rose. No, we're going to end the segment with this. No, we're going to end the segment with this. Okay. But wait, when are we going to find out if you're right or wrong or not? Oh, LeBron has been the number two seed three times. That is not not. That's not the answer for. to your question. I'm just going to say I'm right. <laughs> I'm just going right. to say I'm right. Fact checking, not our strength here, Jalen right. Jacoby. But wait, wait, he's been, the number, wait, he's no. been the number two seed three times. Yes. So what does that tell you by process of elimination? That he could have been the number three, four, five, six, seven, or eight seed. We'll let everybody the other out three there. Times. We'll let or everybody the number out one there seed. judge for themselves. <laughs> Childish Poetry wants to know. Yes. Rachel Nichols, favorite ice cream. Ooh, chocolate mint chip. And we're putting it on wax. Rachel Nichols is, has been replaced. Jalen Rose has been replaced. Joining me now, Amin El Hassan. What's up? Everybody on the show today is a parent of twins. Yeah. That's oh, the theme. Wow, yeah. That's the theme. Didn't think about that. Twins is a rare medical condition when you have two babies at once. <laughs> is it rare? I mean, I'm sure you subscribe and listen to every single Jalen and Jacoby that we've ever released, so you're familiar with all these stupid games that we play, yeah. one of which is called Zero to 100. Not everything in the world is... Yes or no. Mm-hmm. Not everything is black and white. We explore the gray area with zero mm. to 100. So I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to quantify it. It's not a percentage chance. It's just a number. Right. First thing we're going to do is listen to Cam Newton when he appeared on a Mexican television show. Mexican, okay, you're um, Mexican. Yeah, a little bit of some of everything. African, Mexican, what? American, everything. Yeah. Cam, we're, we're glad. To have I have no idea what Cam Newton's ethnical what? makeup is. My question for you is, 0 to 100, how much does Cam Newton believe that he's actually Mexican? Oh, I'll put that around uh, 75, 80. Do you, cause like, he may actually be. I'm not, I have no. absolutely no idea whether or not this man is Mexican or not. Nor do but I. But there was a part of it when you watched the interview that was like, if this was in Turkey, he would be like, I'm Turkish. <laughs> you know? There's a part of me that's just like, he might have just been playing to the audience. Here, let, let me tell you something. When I first uh, moved to Atlanta to go to school... Uh, I was introduced to the concept of good hair. Didn't know what good hair was. Mm. Uh, but everyone, oh, you got that good hair, right? And then the next thing that they was followed with is, you must have Indian in you. Which I, at the time, I thought they meant like I was part Indian because I kind of got weird features. Like, no, no. But then after a while, I realized, no, they meant Native American Indian, right? So Atlanta is a place where it's very common for someone to say, oh, you have really nice features. Yeah, like I'm 118th. This, like they do that yes. all the time. So it would not surprise me that Cam Newton would have like some relative who was probably from Texas, and but they say great granny, what's what's her name, mm. was actually half Mexican. So yeah, I got a little. Good for him. Yeah, they're good for him for saying that. Yeah. Also, Indian in your family, not just something that Old Dirty Bastard says on his album. Mm. Also, Old Dirty Bastard doing an impersonation of Martin from You So Crazy. I put that together one day. Did, what? I, really? Just blew everybody's mind. You think so? You got you know Indian so. in your family coming out the water. Oh man! Old dirty bastard, Martin Cam Newton. I think you're right. Already blowing people's minds here on Jalen Jacoby. Amin Al Hassan. This is one, one topic we <laughs> for <topic. laughs> Jalen Rose. Already derailing the show. Zero to one hundred. How dorky is it that Tim Duncan named his daughter Quill after Peter Quill of Guardians of the Galaxy? Sixty. Yeah, I think you're right. It's it's kind of dorky, but he could have picked a lot it's worse names. It's also a cool name. It's, a cool, it's a cool name. name. Yeah, it's I a- named myself Quincy Q. Is a great. It's a great Absolutely. nickname. Quill is a cool name. So if it was, if she, if he named his daughter Peter, I would have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> or, or 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 a a name that's more kind of heavy handed comic book reference. Star Lord Peter Quill's yes. other name. Something that like wouldn't that wouldn't work yeah. either. Galactus, like that. Those are the ones that are like you're really corny. But Quill is one you can get away with. It's not like people are always going to associate that with the movie every time she says her name. Really cool name. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Zero to 100. Cool. How cold-blooded is it that Jeannie Buss removed her brother from the Laker Trust? Oh, 99. It, it's, all, it's all the way yeah. there. 99. It's all the way there. I, get, I, 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 put, I leave the one in there because he did it to himself. Like, if, if it was 100, he would have been all right. Like, he didn't do anything wrong, and then she just did it anyway. But I'll give the one because he did it to himself. It's 99, though. Um... Someone I bump into a lot at work, 
is Jim Ireland. Mm-hmm. He works at yep. 710. He's the voice of the Lakers. If you want to know anything about the Lakers, it's Ramona Shelburne and Jim Ireland. Those, yep. are my, those are my plugs right there. That's pretty good plugs. So I, did, I went to him and I was like, explain to me what this is when, when um, Jim had tried to push Jeannie out after right. she had already done the, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. And I was like, explain to me, like I'm really dumb, what is happening with this like corporate bully stuff. And he started talking and he used the word like board of directors and trust a lot. Mm-hmm. And I got really confused. I pretended like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> but it's just like there's some, there's some real like corporate just beef going on with yeah. this bus family. It's weird because when you start hearing that stuff, you start to realize how little you know about the NBA. Yes. And that's that's every time when I was working for the Suns, whenever conversations start to veer into board of governors mm-hmm. meetings, and stuff, I just knew that minority this is, share, it's like all this way stuff beyond yeah. like what my understanding and my grasp. I'm more of like let's let's talk about just the team. Yeah, it's like well, she controlled the votes, but right. not all of the votes were actually the, the last vote was hers, so she had to get the majority of three out of five. It's like the electoral college. By yes, the way. I was just like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, huh? So this this is, but people ask me what this means, and I say all it means is the guy after he got pushed out as a decision maker, mm-hmm. as a trustee, as a still part owner, he could still throw cold water on a lot of things. Yes, this kind of eliminates that that from happening. Yes, and again, I don't feel too bad for Mr. Bus as he he owns did it to himself a pretty you, hefty percentage of the second most valuable franchise. In do basketball. you know? Do you know that the whole three year plan thing? Do you know originally? He said one year, and they mm. have to be like, come on, yeah. Jim. He's like, okay, maybe three. And Here's the thing. Here's one thing I always do. I always keep expectations low. Like one year? I always keep the expectations but low. But think about how crazy you got to be to say one yeah. year later, oh, yeah. we're going to be contending we're for We're going to be title. contenders. Jeez, man. It's just like keep expectations I low. Feel, I don't always, feel sorry, as a life lesson, always keep expectations low. <laughs> and then Vladi is like, well, if this is a check back oh, with me in two there's years. another one. Check back with me in two years. Yeah. Come on, Vladi. I'll take it. <laughs> and you heard, you know, with the news going on today. I'll take back with him in two months, see if he still Yeah, see if he still has a job. Yeah. I remember Chris Mullen. Was, we did this behind-the-scenes things for the Kings. Yeah. Chris Mullen had this look in his face like, I'm getting paid, right? He's like, I'm getting paid. I'm out here. I'm famous. They like me. This guy Vivek is crazy. I'm just going to say yes and cash my checks and eventually get until the job a better and say job. Until yeah. a better job yeah. comes yeah. up. Yeah. Because they offered him the Kings coaching job. He's like, no. no I don't, we need someone more yeah. focused on caring <laughs> because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think that's probably a better, a better look for that position. Zero to 100. How lucky is Steph Curry's new dog rookie? That, he has a new dog? Got a new dog. It's a golden doodle. And mm-hmm. he bought it, though, which is, you know, kind of kind of gauche in the dog world. He's supposed to go get a rescue or what? Yeah, you know. Nah, man. Those Listen dogs have to been Bob through Barker. things. Bob Barker. Bob Barker. All, everything I know about, about animal rights is from Bob Barker. Those dogs have been through things, man. I got a, I got little kids. Yeah. I can't I can't bring in some some dog that's in hard time and yeah. almost almost had its life ended. It, yeah. It's seen things. I need I need a dog that's like, you know, sophisticated. <laughs> Used to the finer things. You are you and Jalen. <laughs> you you and Jalen with this bourgeois. No, I'll tell like, you, I, I'm sorry. My I'm dog just, cannot have any emotional trauma. I'm, no, absolutely. I, I cannot bring emotional trauma into my home. My, my buddy Big Waz said this best. He said, we're from New York. And in New York, dogs are not pets. They're weapons. These are weapons. That's fair. I, so so that, like, I'm not a dog person at all. But if I had to get one, give me a brand new one from like the pet store. Don't get me no rescue. I don't want something that has a flashback and turns into Wolverine. And then I had a rescue dog, yeah. and it was extremely loyal and terrifying to anyone that was not in our family. Exactly. And by the way, in a uh, true story, I used to think when I hear rescue dog, I thought, oh, like this is one of those dogs that used to work like with a. <laughs> that like, has some whiskey in a barrel yeah, around its like, neck. Yeah, like a St. Bernard yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's like retired and now it just. <laughs> yeah, 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 goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't that's know retired. that you were rescuing the dog. <laughs> Zero to 100. How much do you understand what a muse cage is? Oh, uh, I would say 99. Really? Yeah, I understand it. You I, understand what a muse cage is? Yes, I do. I do. It's this, this is kind of a muse cage, this place right here. It's the idea of somewhere where he goes. I can't believe your face right now. No, you believe what no, you're saying. I, yeah, I believe what I'm saying. I don't... I think his... Oh man, I better tread softly. Yeah, yeah. Don't get fired. Don't get fired. Yes. But it, I get what he's talking about. Now, the specifics... I disagree heavily with the idea of the dark, the dark news cage. cage, and you need things to make you angry, and that's how you uh, unleash the beast. That's how he did it, but I don't think that applies to everything. And he's got an influence with a lot of younger players in the league, and you see that influence. Like last year, he's telling Draymond Green, "Yes, the tension is good." No, it's not. They won a championship with everybody loving mm. everybody and everyone getting along. Yeah. So this idea that Draymond Green needed to be a bigger jerk for them to be better. 
that's a Kobe Bryant planted seed, and that's his dark muse cage, but that's where I think it's trash. But I understand what the muse cage is. I understand. I have one note. You know, I've been a producer for over a decade and a half at ESPN, and I would just say, like, there's one, I have one quick fix for the muse cage piece. If you are going to work with a puppet, don't make it look like a penis. Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. Just one little note. Words of wisdom. Maybe put some arms on it or something. That's all. That's all. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, yes, sir. We're going to play a game. Let's do it. It's called Keep It Moving. I'm going to bring up a topic that's in the world of sports and pop culture. If you'd like to discuss it, you say hit the brakes. Sure. If you do not want to discuss it, say keep it moving. You'll get the hang of it very quickly. Yeah, my man, Method Man, keeps it moving. Tom Brady is considering playing until he's 46 years old. Meth. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. Luke Maine hit the game-winning shot for the Tar Heels, and then showed up to his 8 a.m. class. Breaks. No way I'm doing that. No chance. First of all, Luke, let me tell, let me tell you something. When you're signing, registering for classes, do you know what they tell you? What time they start at? Why would you ever register for an 8 a.m. class? If it was something that I needed to take, I would just change majors. Well, they do that for the athletes on purpose because a lot of times they'll have like weights in the morning and then that way you go right into your class uh-huh. and then you get done early in the day so they can do practice and all the other things. So that's on purpose. I would but, never play basketball in college. But if I'm if I'm out there bringing the university millions of dollars literally with one yes, shot, yes, yes. sorry, I'm taking it. That one, send check. me the notes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you can send me the notes on that one. I don't I'm not going to be there. On that day. I'm not going. I'm good. 8 a.m. is way too early Dude, for class. Do you remember uh, the Butler team that went to the final with uh, Gordon Hayward? Mm-hmm. He had a computer science final during the final four. Then he had to take. I'm like, no way. Really? No way. Yes. Yes. Here's the thing. Not a computer scientist. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> nope. That information he, he does went, not need to be inside of his brain. He went to school to be one. He does not need to be tested. He didn't, he didn't know he was going to be an NBA player. He didn't know. No one knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brad Stevens, good coach overrated. Just throw it out there. Good coach. Relative to what people perceive him as, though, there's a little bit of me that's like, eh, 500. Uh, there's, you know? a, there's a little like bit perception of Perception versus yeah. reality. It's like, yeah, all of a sudden everyone's Look, decided that he's the greatest coach. But like, ah. This happens. Yeah. This happens to them all. Everyone gets that, oh, he's a genius. Then, no, oh, you're an idiot. And, you know, he's, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Big Baby said that he would welcome Ray Allen to the, the 08 reunion Celtics party. Keep it moving. Hit the brakes. Brakes. Why not? Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look, why not? I feel, I feel like because this is the whole thing is, why do, I mean, who cares? <laughs> I, 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 hit the brakes, I hit the brakes to say who cares. It's not fair. Let's keep moving. <laughs> not who cares about the topic, like, but who cares whether the guy shows up in the anyway. Yeah, I got you. Scott Pollard's not invited. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> nope. Colin Kaepernick wants the chance to start and is asking for about nine or ten dollars million dollars annually no I could keep it moving can we keep it moving thank you John Elway on Tony Romo the hmm. plan is to stay the course with the Broncos two quarterbacks no, keep it moving yeah. <laughs> Tony Romo always keep it moving Lonzo Ball okay. said he is better than Mark Fultz. but from the breaks yeah okay he should say that yeah. This is a heavy marketing period for all of if these I'm guys. If I'm in a job interview, I'm like, hey, have you ever met my friend Steve? Yeah, He's no. much better suited for this yeah. position. We, we had him on Sports Station today, and somebody – oh, LZ said people were uh, criticizing the defensive strategy UCLA used uh, in that game. So do you think it was more uh, – the game they lost to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So it was more you not being up to par, or was it the strategy? And I didn't say anything about it. Inside, I was like, Lonzo, please do tra- not say the strategy. A tra- it's a trap. I don't care how true it is. Lonzo, it's a trap. Yeah. It's, it's a, a trap, it's a Lonzo. Trap. Yeah. You got to know. Turn into Adam Wagbar out there. Yeah. And sure enough, the kid said, no, it was my fault. I went uh, I went over on screens when I should have gone under, and I got burnt because of it, but I'll be better. Even if you don't believe that, that Even is how if you, you don't that. believe Nobody cares about the truth. They care yes. about, are you smart enough when we ask to you a question? To avoid the truth, yes. Exactly. Are you smart enough to handle yourself in these situations? I just want to... Celebrate a moment that we just had. My co-host made a Star Wars reference. <laughs> oh, man. You don't know about me, then. Jalen Rose. Never seen it. No. Never seen no. a frame of any of the Star Wars movies, which I find kind of impossible. It's, I feel like he's kind of lying. Especially at yeah. his age yes. bracket, right? He, like He was like 12 when the first one came it, out. It, like, it how could you not? I mean, even if you didn't see it, like after a while, you hear so many people talking about it that, okay, I got to see what the hubbub is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
possible sale of the Carolina Panthers could come up amongst the owners at the meeting. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes there. How much are the Carolina Panthers worth? That's what I want to know. Ooh. Like, um, they'd be at the ballpark it. NFL oh, team. first of all, I'm terrible at this. Oh, really? Right? But I'm, I, I, this is the Forbes on, game? The Forbes list yeah. is usually the NBA franchises are worth more, and they're like the tops are like $3 billion. I'm going to say that, that you're going to get $1.5 billion based on absolutely nothing. The producer is going to look it up and get the actual number, but I'm going to say $1.5 billion. I'm going to say, I think you can get two because the, the NFL, with the, the way the TV contract works, you're, it's guaranteed money every year. More, yeah. than, more than the guaranteed money the NBA teams get. The only reason why NBA teams are moving up now is because now it's not a losing proposition anymore. It used to be mm-hmm. you buy an NBA team, and you'll have short-term losses. Then you sell it, and you get all your money sure. back. Now it's no, every year we're operating, we have income coming in because of the new TV deal. Yeah. NFL TV deal obviously dwarfs ours, and they only have two extra teams. So Here's my concern. There's a wonderful statue outside the Panther Stadium of the owner of the Panthers flanked by two gigantic, mean-looking Panthers. And if I bought the team, I was going to have to take it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just have to be like, can we just change his face or something? I love the statue, guys. Yeah. But like, can we just like slim him down a little no, bit and put my head on there? You're doing the Saddam thing. You're putting it over and you pull it down <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and then put a flag over <laughs> exactly, the head. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Another great reference. <laughs> The Browns may make another run at Jimmy. Can we just keep it moving? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Master P keeps telling TMZ cameras that he wants to coach in the NBA. Yeah, let's, let's uh, put the brakes on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, like, I don't, what, here's the thing that most people don't get. This bleep ain't fun, man. Like, if you're not already doing it, Right, if you're already in the system and you're yeah. like, okay, it might be like I have aspirations to be a head coach or whatever. But if you're like just some dude on your couch and you say I want to coach, dude, it's not fun. It's a lot of work. That's a great point. And it's thankless work. And yeah. when everything goes right, everyone says, man, how great was LeBron tonight? And anything goes wrong, is like, David Black, get out of here. Mm, yes, it's, it's a thankless job. Now it's a very well compensated thankless job. Mm-hmm. But again, the outsiders they think it's like you got a player schedule. You come in and you leave at one o'clock, and I got to kick it for the rest of the day. No, you're there all day long. I do not want to coach in the oh, NBA. It's terrible, whatsoever. I don't want to coach in the NBA, and I actually worked there. Mm-hmm. I had no desire to do it. And also, like, you don't start as the head coach, master. No. Pete. You know what I mean? No. Like you're gonna be like the assistant, assistant no. film guy. Yes. You know, working yeah. there, like not getting paid that much. No. Working for long hours. Right. Or player development. That's a new one. But here's the other thing. It's like he's just drinking a smoothie, walking through a parking lot, <laughs> and they're, they're like, "Do you want to coach in the NBA?" He's like, "Yeah, man." <laughs> you know? I guess. You, yeah. It's like if I'm drinking a nice like banana strawberry smoothie, and someone's like, "Nah." Do you want to be an astronaut? Yeah. Do you want? Yeah. I'm like, what? sure. Why not? Yeah. I want to go. I've been yeah, going to go Mars. Yeah. I want to see if Kyrie's right, man. <laughs> I want to see this with my own eyes, man. I gotta get this. Gotta get this together. <laughs> one more. Right. Oh, Panthers worth two point one billion dollars. Called it. And you're only what's that? A hundred million dollars off. Yeah, only a hundred million dollars. Are you friends? Off. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah. That's, that's that's nothing. One more. <laughs> the Lions GM is open to signing Adrian Peterson. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Johnny Manziel. Let, yeah, let's let's bump the brakes. Why not? Why is it, AP went from everyone was like, whoa, AP is available, to yeah. now it's like. Oh, ew, I don't know. Yeah, he's asking for a lot of money. It's like that Simpsons episode where it says it's matter transporter two dollars. Says oh, yeah. and it only transports matter. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I get it. Like running backs have uh, a short shelf life, right? Mm-hmm. But he's still really good. I, I mean, if you're a team that needs a running back, wouldn't you just take the L for the one to two years of good performance you think you get out of him, and then just kind of like stretch out the rest? Here's the thing. The Lions have a way of making their superstars retire early. <laughs> yes, they do. So I feel like if Adrian yeah. Peterson should probably avoid that one. You know? Yeah, they, 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 take, like, take a cue. <laughs> literally forcing people into stop playing the game whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe that's exactly what he needs. Who knows? Yep. Diddy had a diamond implanted on his tooth, like this one, kind of next to the canine, I want to call it. What? Two carrots. This is a simple question that we ask on this program, I mean, in for Jalen. Is getting a diamond implanted in your tooth a soft move or a boss move? I kind of I kind of feel like it's a boss move. Not that I would do it, 
but because the amount of uh, extra work you have to do in your dental care. It, that's that's my concern. Right? Like, so if you're willing to go through that, it's not that, oh, you're willing to pay $2 million or how much. No, that's yeah. It's nothing to a guy like that. But the idea that you have to have special flossing yes, things. Yes, and, and you have all. to like go probably like every three months to yeah. the dentist and to have it checked deep, out. There's yeah. nerves in there. I'm just yeah. being very concerned. Look, but my, the idea that he said, I'll do it. I'll take that out. Like, you know, kind of me. I would probably rather have a six inch bloody gash on my arm than like a <laughs> tiny little cut on my tongue oh, or in yeah. my gums. Yeah. Like, like, I just feel like the mouth, like the oh, dental area. Inside, inside yeah, of your like, lip. You don't yeah, wanna, you're right. Like, I don't want to deal with any of that pain. You know, like you, I would rather lose a finger than have a tiny little, tiny pin sized cut I'm, I'm on my tongue. I'm with you. When, anytime you get like a canker sore or something like yeah. that, it's like everything. Yeah. You have Here's a lemonade in it. Here's what you're going to see day. Diddy. In every interview you see Diddy now, you're going to see him run, rubbing his tongue against mm. that diamond. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's going to be like one of those uh, fixations. Like, I don't know. I'm going to go uh, soft move yeah, on this yeah, one. You know what? Now you swayed me on that one. The Raiders are pretty much officially in Las Vegas now. Mm-hmm. Jalen, very much against this concept. Yeah. Me, very much for this mm-hmm. concept. Where do you stand on the Raiders' move to Las Vegas? Boss move. Boss mm. move. We're not even playing that game, but it is a boss move. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. All right. It's all well, good. You won. You won the game. You won okay. soft over boss There you move. go. No, I, it's, here's the thing. And, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Like, this city wants to put up the money and resources to take care of this team. Oakland did it. And that's good. Mm-hmm. We should feel good about this for Oakland because now, hopefully, public money will be used for something they, they actually need in Oakland. That's the dream. That's the dream. Uh, doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work that way, but but we know that going to a, a sports team, is, it's definitely not yes. going to. And so, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's, is it sad that the Sonics left Oakland, uh, Seattle? Yes. yes. Is it sad that... Um, you know that the Raiders are now looking like the or say the Chargers le- left San Diego. Yes, but in all these cases, if the decision is use this public money to help a billionaire have a build a new house, yes, or or perhaps potentially even the the potential for a small percentage of that to be used for something good, we should applaud. When they make first when of all, you make that I am one thousand percent going to plagiarize that next time I talk to Jalen about it. <laughs> Not credit you whatsoever, yeah. because usually I'm just like, eh, it'd be a lot of fun to go to Vegas and get drunk and watch your team play the Raiders. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. See, I mean, that's that's it's too. like a big that's boys too. weekend. Look, that you know? too. It's going to be great for Las Vegas, yes. but but from the Oakland side, I think we're looking yes. at the wrong way. This is, that's a great point. Yeah, see, that's, that's a good how, point. You know what? And that's how you make people feel bad. Like you mad because a sports team is yeah. not oh, I'm stealing sorry. money. Like, oh, you don't think underprivileged children want education? Yeah, exactly. You do that. Oh, 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 you want to dress up in makeup and wear your little <laughs> your scary skulls. Well, guess what I want to do? Educate children. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, er- Fix the streets. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So, the Raiders are going to move to Vegas, and my man Dennis Hoff, do you know who Dennis Hoff is? Uh, I think so, yeah. Have you ever seen Cat House on yes, HBO? Yes, 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 I Dennis have. Hoff, anytime I, anything I, happens I, in Vegas, Dennis Hoff I jumps know. on it as any sort of opportunity to, to get some publicity for right. himself. Remember even Lamar? Even when yeah. Lamar had his incidents yes. in Vegas. Yep. Like all of a sudden Dennis Hoff was like in the news. Yeah. What so is that? His cat house. I believe so. Yeah. I believe he owns multiple. This is a new one. He is threatening to open a Raiders themed brothel outside of Las Vegas called, wait for it, mm-hmm. Pirate's Booty. Oh, I thought he was going to call it the Black Hole. Was that too much? That was good. Okay. That was good. I, I actually thought that's where he was going to go. That was very nice. I tried. Good job. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing on the inside. Hard. I'm just not allowed you to laugh. You scared me there. I'm not allowed to laugh at that I joke. I thought Connor Shell was just going to kick the door down. I'm not allowed to laugh at that joke, I mean, and for a lot that, of reasons. Oh, okay. I'm not allowed to laugh All at that right. joke. Okay. Pirate's booty, though. You can't name it after a children's snack. You know what I mean? Uh, you know like, what? Come on, man. I'm not down with that children's no. snack. I go, I go to... Really? I go to Jamba Juice. I go to Jamba Juice with my kid. My kid loves Jamba Juice, right? That's the treat for the week. If, you, mm. if you've been good, you get Jamba Juice. And then with the Jamba Juice, you get a bag of snacks. And they got the pop chips, which I'm a fan of. And then they got the Pirate's Booty. And I say, no. And they say, why? And I say, because the pop chips are better. That's what I say. But the truth is, I'm not comfortable with the name Pirate's Booty as something my child is going to be eating. I don't like a child eating Pirate's Booty. I think that's fair. Yeah. My child eats tons of pirates pudding. <laughs> what? Drake canceled his show in Amsterdam, claiming he had some bad sushi. Bad sushi or lots of good weed. You make the call. Oh, I'm going to say bad sushi. This, look, this dude... Is, this, Probably. Look, I'll tell you, this dude, it's not like, 
Uh, like, oh, let me have a little bit of weed. Oh, I heard Amsterdam. Like, look, these guys are getting the best stuff, and yeah. they're smoking really good everywhere they go. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think he's like, wow, I'm in Amsterdam. Yeah, let's like, take advantage of no. this lax drug <laughs> restrictions. Come on, man. I mean, California's turning into that. Also, he, he's like, there's each show. I mean, I don't know what the number is, but he's got to be getting at least a hundred thousand dollars a night on this. Tour. Yeah, no, at I, least no, and he spends a lot of money too. So that's like, there's, he's not giving up shows just. Just because of oh we were too high today or oh I had too much fun at the coffee yeah. houses or whatever no it's, if he if he said sushi I believe him. I have a simple question for you, mm-hmm. Joe Kim Noah. What happened? Uh, he, like, what what <laughs> happened? Wait, in general or just or no, spe- not in general. Very specifically, we all know what happened in general. Okay, right. He was given a contract to play basketball, yes. which he is no longer good at doing. Right, by a dumb person. That's what yeah. happened in yeah. general. Yes. Okay. But specifically, he is. If you, in case you don't know, he has tested positive yeah. for a banned substance list. He's now got a twenty game suspension. Oh, oh, I got a twenty game suspension. Guess what? I'm healthy. I'm ready to play. So now he's starting to serve that. He'll serve the rest of it next year. Right. He tested positive for like a uh, what is it? I'm sorry, it's like, like uh, estrogen it, inhibitor. It, something yeah. that's, it is something that like these Manny Control Ramirez it. thing. Like right. if you are using performance enhancing drugs, you can mask it or balance off some of the side effects right. using this, which is why it's on the banned list. Right? Do you believe that he knew what he was doing when he took it? It's an over the counter drug. I'll give, I got a better question. Do you think he had the receipt? Because if mm. he if he's taking PEDs and that's him on PEDs, bro, you need yeah. a refund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that junk P- ain't working. P- PED doctors around the world yeah. are like, I am not working with Joe no. Noah. I just want everyone to be clear. You gotta, yeah, you didn't get it from me. Yeah, you didn't get it from me. Is what all the guys in South Beach yes. are saying. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, If he had come to me, he'd be out there dunking yeah, on people. Yeah, he would be. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's interesting to me that um, one thing that is sort of a misconception, and I've learned this from talking to ex-athletes, is people think that athletes are using performance enhancing drugs to get big and strong no, it's and they're to, not they're to recover, to recover from yeah. injuries and to recover from Petty. fatigue yes exactly it's like it's not people aren't out there like I need I need to get big and strong and you know so I'm gonna take some steroids this isn't like 1987 anymore <laughs> you know like they're not professional wrestlers it's not Drago yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's I'm injured I look it says four to six weeks the right. playoffs start in three weeks maybe I can get a little edge by sure. Duke using this thing Joe Kim Noah was battling with injuries I don't know what's going through his head again who knows again still needs a refund yes still yes, yes. still in effect <laughs> it's a good point it's a good point another question Marcin Gortat was mm-hmm. caught by TMZ cameras he's here in Los Angeles okay he was leaving a nightclub with three women nice question for you is if you are single which I am not mm-hmm. neither am I is it better to leave the nightclub with three women or with one woman if you're marching Gortat three, I'm going one woman. No, no, no. I you're, just feel like it's gonna no, be hard. Like no. one wants to go home, the other one wants to stop and get food. No, 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 no. It's no. just like too many agendas you're, in the car. At you're, once. you're making the same mistake that so many people make, which is you are positing yourself in that situation. If it were you or I, yes, yeah, that's I just how don't want to deal with us. the different agendas and one thinks I'm the bad person. Let's get out of the car. Like I don't, I don't want to deal. Multi-million dollar star athlete who's seven feet tall. He's not dealing with those issues. Yeah, he's probably not. He's really things. not dealing with those issues. When they walk out with three, it, it's because he's walking out with three, not one. And then two decided to tag along. Good for Martian. Good yeah, for good for him. him. And the Wizards. Why not? Yeah, they're playing well. It is, it's a reward for playing well. Yeah. What's wrong with the Hawks? What's going on? The short answer is Paul Millsap. Right, Paul yeah. has been hurt, and he's their best player, and they mm-hmm. need him. And they're he's, also you're probably never going to see him again in a Hawks uniform. Yeah, yeah, he's very versatile uh, in terms of his ability to impact the game from different positions Seven and guard different guys. Seven straight, uh, the, man. If you ask me, like this thing all started when they decided that Dennis Schroeder. We're gonna give him the keys. Like I Let's just give didn't him the keys get, like the there's guard. nothing that he done yeah. that I, man, yeah. I, I play he has like game. a couple yeah. good games. Like I, a couple I play good this games. game every single time the Hawks are on TV and I'm watching them. I say, guys, let's play the game again. Dennis Schroeder, what's the appeal? Mm. I still don't get it. I still is, he remind you know who he reminds me of? People always had that Rondo comparison. There, I never thought he reminded me of Rondo. I mean, body type alone, Roddy Bobois. Roddy Buckets. Huh. That's who he was the whole time. Huh. Yeah. Set him loose. Let him go out there and score. Sure. Be my starting point guard. Make sure the nope, big guys nope. are happy. Like, that's not right, his Here's th- who he is. He's a great backup point guard for the second team. Roddy Bobois. He'll, he'll create buckets. Like, he can get a bucket himself. Yes, sure. But at the second team, that's what you need. Absolutely. At the end of the first quarter or yeah. whatever. Do you know what he's not? Let's trade everybody and give the keys oh, to Dennis Schroeder. 
I mean, it just it seemed like there was. I mean, what was the plan? What there? could go wrong? Would we'll we'll give a German? And, would you give a German skateboarder the future of the franchise? <laughs> the German skateboarder. But you know, the funny thing is, it's not like I'm a huge, just huge Jeff Teague apologist. No, I'm just. Saying, he wasn't the answer either. Yeah, but he wasn't but, the answer. It, he was. You weren't ready. They with, very, they very conscientiously made a decision yes. to to give the keys of the car yeah. to Dennis Schroeder. Well, the car, the car is crashing. Yes, the car, the car is crashing. <laughs> We're going to open up our 100 Flowers Twitter feed quickly. Joined by Amin al Hassan, gracious enough to join me in the Jalen and Jacoby studio. Jalen is out doing sitcom y weird things. Mm. By the way, I would object if I were you. Did you see the fake Jacoby they had on there? I'm very familiar with the dude, fake Jacoby. Like, dude, that was, that's, the, like, that's the part where he, as an executive producer, has to put his foot down and say, no, you guys are recasting this. Well, here's the thing, Amin. I met the fake Jacoby yesterday. Okay. He is wonderful. Sure, he's what? so nice. Okay, he's funny. He's warm. He's he, he, he's he, he may be an upgrade. He may be an upgrade. He looks. He really may be an upgrade. He looks like. Well, I'm just saying. I, I'm sure all those things are true. He kind of looks like the doofus sidekick, and you are not the doofus sidekick. Like, thank you very or much. Like you don't look like the doofus. I sidekick. consider Jalen my doofus sidekick. There you to go. Be with you, maybe this is just like a like Jalen's way of like this is what reality should be. Yeah, but, but what if they cast the Rock though? You don't want that either. Wait, you know what I mean? What if that's what Jalen thinks you look like? Like, yeah, it kind of does remind me of Jacoby. It's also not. It's not like Will Smith playing Ali. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like it's just a character yeah, in my I name know. that's like loosely based. Still, on, you know, it's still, like it's this not. Is, this is like Larry not David trying to capture the essence of me, dude. This is like Larry David. Every time someone brings up Costanza being an idiot, he says, "I don't know, why is he an idiot?" Because Costanza is based on Larry David. Mm. So he always. In, it's a running gag on Curb Your Enthusiasm when someone says, "I love Seinfeld." Oh, Costanza, what an idiot! What a complete loser! And Larry gets a real self. I understand. Idiot. So I think you kind of, yo, you... I completely understand. Mm. My main concern was that he would be the, like, yo, 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 what up, <laughs> oh, yes. B? And, is, like, it's, he's not that, the and lesser I'm totally two fine. The lesser you know what I mean? Like, right. like, I was really concerned that they were going to go that direction, and I was just like, I'm just going to change my name and move to Mexico. Point taken. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, this it could be a lot worse. Okay. Question for you from our 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. I mean, when you went to the Dave Chappelle party, did you even offer to bring Jacoby? This person did not listen to the Black Opinion Matters podcast Absolutely very not. carefully because it's actually the other way around. I did listen to this episode Thank of you. the True Hoop Black Opinions yeah, Matter there, Monday there it is, Golden yeah. Do-Rag special. Yes. And uh, there was a Dave Chappelle party at All Star. Yes, there was. Everybody on the show went except for me. Everybody working for ESPN, including interns and social media coordinators, mm-hmm. was there. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know where. Well, I didn't even have like a location, but you can't come. It was just like well, I don't know. What? And so I just, oh, I, I take it back. Beetle also didn't go because I hung out with Beetle that night. Well, here's the thing: Beetle's going to bed. No, Beetle didn't Beetle's go to going bed. to bed. Beetle's going to bed. Beetle went to Bourbon Street and held held shop. Of course she did. <laughs> with She's a, a legend. With a Spurs hat on as her disguise. <laughs> I have a very unpopular opinion. Okay. I didn't like the Dave Chappelle stand-up special on Netflix. You are wildly what? out of control, sir. I did. I didn't like you it. You didn't like it? I I was supposed to like it. I wanted to like it. I laughed at the first ten minutes because it was Dave Chappelle, and he's like like Will Smith or John C. Riley. I mean, Will uh, Ferrell or John yeah. C. Riley just makes me laugh just by being right. him. But after a while, I was like, oh, we're we're doing gay jokes. Like, oh, that's what we're doing, Dave. The twenty minutes of gay jokes. Okay, okay, Dave. The, oh, he, now we're going to do year, same some, Cosby, new boots? some Cosby, and now we're going to do some OJ. It just kind of felt like... Oh, okay, now I'll say this. there was That was one thing I did notice throughout the whole thing, is that the material seems dated. Even like in the second special, the stuff he's talking about, the songs he's referencing, it's all funny jokes. Yeah. But it's like, these are funny jokes from like five years ago. Are they funny jokes? I thought they were I'm, funny. I'm I supposed laugh. to think they're funny, dude. I thought, look, I thought they were I, nice. Look, if Dave Chappelle, if you're listening to the radio right now, I'm a fan of yours. You are an icon, but you know what? You don't win every game. You didn't. We didn't win that I, I, one. Look, I, I didn't see the Texas one yet either. I only watched oh, okay. the, the Age of Spain. So I heard I, the Texas I, one was much better. I'll say. I'll, I'll pull out this one. Also, listen. What? They paid him fifty million dollars. Did I just yeah. watch twenty five million dollars? No, I did not. I watched about a hundred thousand dollars. That's what look, I watched. They paid him fifty million dollars. They're gonna get a whole lot more back. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. But but the like the whole thing where he's talking about. <laughs> I have quiet please money at desk. Like, you didn't think yes, that was funny? That was funny. Like I mean, like, I laughed out loud through right. it. But like at one point, me and my wife were on the couch, like 
Is this funny? You know, like it's no, supposed I, to be. I was, I was laughing, man. I was it. I, was like, I la- look. I, I get it. The Cosby stuff is kind of, uh, but it was funny. Like the idea. <laughs> it was I, pretty can't, good. I can't say the joke. It's Don't not say any of it. Not appropriate. Don't right say here, but any of it. I, I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed both specials, but I will be with you on here, this. Do you know where I was? Do you know where I was with it? I was what? a little bit like Kyrie Irving and the, the Earth flat thing. I was like, you know what? Like I'm just going to decide for myself. I'm not going to, just because everyone sure. else says this is funny, like, I'm going to watch it, sure. and you know what I didn't do? I didn't laugh that much. I laughed the whole and time. And a lot of, like, eyebrow raise, like, hmm. I laughed the whole time. Hmm. I was tears streaming down my face. I, I was thoroughly entertained. We have another question. Let me tell you something about one of my philosophies. Mm-hmm. I do not like making fun of people for things that they cannot control. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's hard. It's like... LeBron James didn't decide that he wanted to have a receding hairline. Yeah. He did not do that. However, there may be some decisions that he's made since then that could be up for criticism. Uh huh. Perhaps there was a couple procedures that were done. Uh huh. Who knows? This question comes from Los. He wants to know from you. How would we react to LeBron embracing the baldness if it happened? Does it ever? That's a great question. Mm. We are inevitably getting to a point mm. in which we have a bald LeBron James yes. playing in the NBA. Like, this is inevitable if you ask me. Either that or he's going to, like, literally See, wear a wig. I don't, yeah, I think he's Rick burying it. I don't think he's ever going to accept it. If you don't think did, so? I think if he embraced it, if he had embraced it years ago, I think it would have been cool because Drexler every, had a thing. Drexler went, went for a long time. Totally, yeah, tried it and would not give up that yeah. widow speak or whatever. Yeah. Uh, World Be Free had a really, mm. like, that's a Another classic good one right there. But, but if LeBron had just come home like years ago, no one would have batted an eyelid because, again, we, if Drexler, you know, eventually came to that point. Jordan, um, Barkley had hair, then he got rid of it. Everyone, it happens, right? It happens to everyone. No one would have ever, even Kobe, who, who does this weird low Caesar thing. I don't understand it. It's just the slope of his head allows him to look like he still has a hairline when he really does Maybe that's his muse cage right there <laughs> on the, the extra forehead that he's got. But So I don't think he'll ever do it, but can we make fun of him? I say, absolutely. We can, right? I feel like I can because I have a bad hairline. So I was just like, it's like, you know, it's like, it's right. it's like using the N-word, right? I can do it. I, I, I am one, but. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Great way to finish the show. <laughs> Guys, look at me in front of LeBron. <laughs> Got the N word in there. It's yeah. perfect. Go out with a bang. Yep. Yep. Thanks so much for joining us. Amin El Hassan in for Jalen. Make sure you subscribe to the Jalen Jacoby podcast. Jalen will be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening on ESPN Radio, for watching on ESPN2 and ESPN News, and subscribing to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. We are-